Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. Has gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Instrumentation. Go. Com. Go. Timer. Go. GCQ. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. AC is go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch director. The launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. This is the mission director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. T0 is planned for 1430 Zulu. Set count to start at 1426 Zulu. Roger. T0 is set for 1430 Zulu. Count will start at 1426 Zulu. One twenty. Orca is armed. FCS count started. Reduce ECS for launch. Roger. Vent valves locked. T minus one minute. Status. Range green. Stable at step three. Twenty eight. ECS reduced for launch. Roger. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go MUOS five. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and lift off of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the fifth mobile user objective system satellite for the United States Navy. MUO significantly enhances communications for US forces on the move. program is complete. Mark 1. Booster engine signatures look good. And booster has throttled back up. Max and Q. RD-180s performing well for the uh, set MR. All signatures look good. Currently flying at an altitude of 10 miles, downrange distance 6.8 miles, current velocity 2,400 miles per hour. And booster has throttled back right on schedule. Signatures look good. You are hearing the voice of Marty Milanowski. SRB chamber pressures have plateau, looking data. for burnout momentarily. And the SRBs have burned out. Booster will throttle back up momentarily, and we have begun throttling back up. Signatures continue to look good. Looking for SRB jettison. And we have jettisoned all five SRBs at this time. Signatures look good. Closed loop steering has been enabled. Minor body rates associated with closed loop control. Current altitude, 36 miles, downrange distance, 46 miles, current velocity, 4,580 miles per hour.
Range track looks good. RD-180 continues to perform well. Bus and battery voltages are stable. Tank pressures look good. Coming up on our 2.5G throttle segment. And the booster has begun throttling to maintain 2.5Gs for payload fairing separation. Engine performance continues to look good. Maintain our 2.5G throttle segment. Tank pressures look good. Bus and battery voltages are good as well. And we have indication of payload fairing jettison. And CFR jettison. We have now throttled back up to 95%. Engine response looks good. And we've begun throttling to maintain our 4.6G segment in preparation for a shutdown. Boost phase cooldown is underway. And boost phase chill down is complete. Coming up on Beco momentarily. And we have Beco. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros and stage separation. We have locks and fuel pre-start. GM2 purge firing the RCS is underway. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Centaur steering has been enabled. Signatures look good. RL-10 chamber pressures, pump discharge, and fuel venturi all within expected parameters. And we've seen some RCS thermal conditioning firings, prepping that system for use during the burn. Signatures look good. Centaur PU has gone to closed loop control as well. Decatur, Alabama, the Atlas V 551 is the largest and most powerful configuration in the Atlas V fleet. It is comprised of a common core booster powered by an RD-180 engine, five Aerojet Rocketdyne solid rocket boosters, and a Centaur second stage powered by an Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10C1 engine. The MUOS-5 satellite is protected during ascent by a five meter diameter payload fairing. Events that took place in preparation for today's launch began on June 4th when the MUO spacecraft was encapsulated inside the payload bearing. On June 13th, the encapsulated payload was transported to the Vertical Integration Facility, or VIF, at Space Launch Complex 41, where it was mated to the Atlas V rocket. The launch countdown begins with moving the rocket from the VIF to the pad at approximately 8 a.m. yesterday. The quarter mile trip began using six components to complete the 20 minute trip. Weighing in at about 2 million pounds, the mobile launch platform, or MLP, supports the rocket and contains air conditioning, electrical, and commodities while the undercarriages bear the weight of the MLP and the rocket. Two rail cars lead the move with the payload van providing communication to the payload while the groundbound houses the ground support for the rocket. At the rear of the convoy, the portable environmental control system provides air conditioning to the payload and to the rocket. Finally, track mobiles provide the power to move the 3.5 million pound convoy. 
a third track mobile is added to the front of the convoy to move our largest Atlas V configurations, like today's 551 rocket. The Atlas V rocket stands 206 feet tall, or about 21 stories, and weighs about 1.3 million pounds fully fueled. The RD-180 main engines and five solid rocket boosters produce approximately two and a half million pounds of the thrust to lift the rocket off the pad and begin its journey into orbit. The Navy's fifth mobile user objective system satellite completes the initial configuration of an advanced network of orbiting satellites and relay ground stations that is revolutionizing secure, tactical UHF communications for mobile military forces. Users with MUOS terminals can seamlessly connect around the globe with simultaneous crystal clear voice, video, and mission data on a high-speed internet protocol-based system. The MUOS team is led by the Navy's Communications Satellite Program Office. Lockheed Martin is the prime contractor and systems integrator. The artwork on the payload fairing of the rocket recognizes completion of the MUOS satellite constellation, along with ropes symbolizing the Navy's role in the program.